What's up guys and welcome to Miranda Detailing. So in today's video, we're working on this truck and restoring this trim. Now, if this truck looks familiar, well, go up in the card and watch the original video where we wash, decon it, polish it, and seal it. And I show a little bit of the trim restoration in that, but in this video, I'm gonna focus more on how to restore this horrible faded trim. So as we take a look at this trim, it's really, really bad. Now, sometimes you can just throw a dressing on it and it helps, but it will eventually wear off. It's a temporary solution and uh, it's actually a very temporary solution if you just dress it. Let's restore it so that it looks better for longer. Many different ways of doing this. You could actually use a ceramic coating like G-Technic C4 or Gion Trim. Those are great for actually restoring gray faded trim like this. I've worked on avalanches, Chevy avalanches. In fact, I'll put a card uh, up in the corner as well for that video. So again, many different things, solution finish, there's just a ton of them out there. But today we're using more than just a dressing or a coating, this is actually a trim paint designed specifically for this type of faded trim to restore it and bring it back to black. Now, this is not just a dressing, this is way more potent. This is technically a thick viscosity type of paint. It comes in black and gray. So Shine Supply makes this. I'll have links down below. Check out Car Supplies Warehouse. Enter code Miranda10. You'll get 10% off of these products. Now I'm doing a test here. I already did this section here. I had to tape it because this stuff is basically a paint. I don't want it on the clear coat at all because it's a pain to wipe off. So I'm taping it. Now you see that some areas here, they're still drying. It's not gonna be 100% perfect. This paint dries very, very quickly, and you basically have to apply it as evenly as you can, and then leave it alone. If you need to come back and do a second coat, then you can do that. But this is in the middle of drying. I don't wanna touch it. I'm gonna leave it, and if it's still a little streaky, then I'll go back over it uh, with the, the paint. And then you can actually coat over this or use another type of dressing to even it out. So I have to work fast. I'm just using a little applicator here. Use whatever applicator you find that works best for you. And I have to move quickly with this and get it on as evenly as I can without leaving any heavy spots or blotches or anything like that. So evenly go along, go like in one direction. Don't go all over the place. Sometimes you gotta do circular motions, but always end with one linear movement across. And uh, that way you don't leave weird blotches or cross hatching with this stuff. It's basically the same as painting a wall, painting trim, you know, in your house. You go in one fluid motion, not haphazardly all over the place. But you do have to kind of work this into the grain. And I'm thinking it'll probably take two coats because this is just horribly faded trim. But as you can see, I mean, instantly it makes a big difference. I've seen some guys apply this with a paintbrush. That's a, that's a possibility or some other type of brush. In fact, I, I might actually try that when I'm done with this section here and maybe use one of the work stuff brushes and just dedicate it for trim restoration like this. This is really helping this horrible trim back here. This is really the worst section. This gets the brunt of all of the, you know, things sliding over the tailgate. So I have an old work stuff brush that the little cap fell off of it, but all the bristles are still in place. So I'm gonna use this to apply it and let's just see how it works. Or you could just use like a regular paint brush, but we'll see. This could leave a better texture instead of leaving wipe marks like the applicator. I don't know, uh, maybe. Maybe this applies it a little bit more evenly. You can really stipple into the texture with a brush a lot better without having put a ton of pressure down on it, which is good. Oh, that seems to be pretty good. Okay, this, this might be my preferred method. I've been using this stuff with the applicator, but 
I haven't really thought about using a brush like this, kind of like a paintbrush. I used to do interior painting in a previous life. I should have thought of this, but I didn't. So I feel it's a lot more controlled and I'm not even getting my hands dirty either with the applicator. So yeah, I think I'm gonna dedicate this brush to the trim restoration, the trim paint. Make sure the light sometimes plays with your eyes and you miss spots. So I've got to make sure I get all the spots. So this does seem to take a little bit longer than the other, than using the applicator, but I think we're getting a better finish as well. Now this can be an excellent upgrade or add-on to any type of detailing service that you're offering because this is a premium type of service that we're doing here, this type of trim restoration because it's not just simply dressing the plastics as a temporary solution. This is more of a semi-permanent solution because we're, we're literally painting the trim. So once again, guys, taping is important for this product. You, you just have to. It's not, uh, I don't really think this is something that you can try to get away with without taping, especially if you can't get up to the edges without getting paint on the paint. So this is just a must. This is the one time where I say this is a necessity because if you get that trim paint on the clear coat, well, you're on your own, buddy. So we're back where we started on this trim. It's all dry, but this is what we use with the applicator. I'm gonna go back over it with the brush and even things out, and I think this will produce a better finish. It puts it on a little bit heavier, which is a good thing because it allows it to kind of flow and not just create streaks. And I should be able to even things out a little better. But doing trim like this can always be a little tricky because of the damaged trim, it can cause things to be weird. It will absorb at different rates. So that's kind of weird. It'll dry faster in some areas because of its absorbing into the plastic. Your heat, you know, where you are, the heat and humidity will make a difference. I'm trying to end with even brush strokes, no cross hatching or circles or any patchiness left behind. You want even brush strokes here. Much better already. Now I'm gonna redo the top here again with the brush. This is second coat. This should be the final coat. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking it's looking really good at this point. I just need to even things out. Again, this is gonna take time, so factor that into what you charge. And as far as pricing goes, this is really more for another video. When it comes to pricing things like this, I go by the job, not by hours spent on it. So, because that can be um, a little misleading and it can also kind of waste your time. Because if you're only charging, you know, $50 an hour, you can get this done in an hour. And you don't want to just charge 50 bucks for this. If it were me, this is something where I charge the customer a premium price because I'm restoring trim. This is going to be more like an extra $200 or more, depending on how much trim I'm doing. So I will go at this with a price per service 
not per hour. But it's totally up to you. I know different demographics. Some people don't like that. They want to see an hourly wage. They want to know, where are you coming up with that price? That's my price. That's just what I charge. If you can do this, if the customer can do this, they would. Sell them the product and have them do it on their own and see how well that goes. You're paying for experience, not just the actions of work. And if you start doing this on a regular basis, you get faster, you get better, and you can be very, very efficient. This can be an easy hour's worth of work and you can make 200 bucks if you charge that. That is thinking like a business, not just a nice person giving things away. If this is your business, treat it as such and learn how to do these types of add-ons that the customer really would not be able to do on their own properly. That's where the value comes in. Now, when I'm done with this section here, I'm going to go to lunch, come back, finish the rest, see how everything has turned out, peel the tape away, and reveal the final results. And just like painting, you wanna keep the edge as wet as possible. What I mean is leaving the end here where I'm going in the direction with enough paint where it's not dry. You don't wanna be brushing this in too dry. I've noticed that go a little heavy so that you can really work it into the texture and even off with these brush strokes so that your finish will be much, much nicer. Because the drier it is, that's when you start leaving weird patchiness and streaks. So the trim paint is pretty much dry on this side here, and it's looking pretty good, but you can kind of see in some areas like it's a little patchy, and I went over it evenly, but what you're possibly seeing is just the plastic itself. It's, it's a lot of defects and scratches and patchiness and weirdness on the plastic anyway, so yeah, that's, that's just kind of something we got to live with, unfortunately. So. Well, I'm gonna peel the tape at least on this side and kind of see the whole thing and see how it looks. I did this section, this is second coated, this is second coated, uh, that second coated. Hey, what are you doing? I just fed you. But now I'm gonna go over here, second coat this, this, that, and the other fender, and then everything will be done. It's not gray anymore. Yeah, not bad at all. That faded trim is now restored pretty well. Again, you're gonna see weird patchiness because it's just the plastic. It, it absorbs weird and that's after two coats of evenly applying it. So this looks way better. And I know it's still a little glossy. That will die down over time. Don't worry about that. But it's way better than having it faded and ugly. And sometimes with faded gray plastic like that. I've tried coatings and other things and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This is more of an extreme measure where you need to basically paint it. And instead of taking it off and spray painting it or taping it all off and plasticking everything and spray painting it, there's other issues with that with overspray. This is a simple and effective way to restore the trim. And again, that glossiness will die down over time and then you can coat it after, you can dress it, do whatever you want way better than it was. It looks, it looks new, it looks great. Oh yeah, much better. Huge improvement. Now, when it comes to cleaning it, I just clean it in the sink. It's not gonna come out perfectly, dedicate a brush to it. I have a you know rag like this and I'm gonna probably chuck, but I clean it in the sink. I clean it just like I do water-based paints when you're doing interior painting of any sort. Wash it the same way and then let it air dry and you're good to go. So if you're interested in the Shine Supply trim paint, check out the links down below. Don't forget to use code Miranda10, you'll get 10% off. And add that on 
to your detailing services to restore trim like that and perhaps you'll find better ways of applying it maybe with different types of applicators whatever the case experiment try it out see what works best for you and yeah i think you'll really enjoy using this stuff 